This is a tutorial on the transcript list approach to coding words qualitatively using the QDAP package. There are three approaches to qualitative coding in QDAP. You can use the CSV approach, you can use this list transcript approach, or you can time span, use a time span approach to qualitative coding in the QDAP package. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a template, how to code, and how to read in that data and to shape it into long format using the list transcript approach. First thing we will do, we're looking here at RStudio and this is a um, template, a project template cre created with the new project function in QDAP. And the first thing you'll want to do is go into CM data and make that your working directory. You can go up here to more, set as working directory, or you can just set it as your working directory that way. And we'll also want to load the reports package. And that allows us to create these two folders now. And you'll see they appeared over here, CM transcripts and CM code list, and that just keeps everything um, separate. And we also assign them and that will give us the path to those folders. Right now we're going to set the working directory to CM transcripts and we're going to output some transcripts using the data data set from QDAP and it looks like this. Okay. We'll need to have some kind of qualitative codes that may be engagement or perhaps you're looking at something multimodal like um, head turn, color use, something like that. What are your your researcher codes are, you'll want to set them ahead of time. And we're going to assign them to code using the QCV, quick character vector. And they look like this. Right now I only have three dummy codes, AA, BB, and CC. And we'll pretend that they actually stand for something meaningful. Now we want to first make transcript templates. And that what that really gonna, is going to do is take our data statement and then make a transcript out of it that we can code on with markers or pencil or however whatever markup format you use and so you cm underscore df transcript supply to it your dialog variable that happens to be state here and then whatever grouping variables you want to use more often than not you'll probably want to use the person grouping variable or whatever your person is then the file you're going to output it to in this case, we'll use data. I use a TXT file. You could probably you could use a doc file. There's a number of different file formats. I don't think it works for docx though. And you'll see over here in the console what it actually output. And let's go in to the file. See what that looks like. Remember we're in CM data, CM transcripts. And we output a transcript like this. And it makes a nice little transcript that you can just print out. Should be wrapped appropriately as well. And you can print that out and go ahead and encode on it. And let's look at what that looks like. Here I've actually printed that out. And this is the first four uh, turns of talk. And we've coded them with colors. You Maybe you use shapes. It doesn't really matter. What matters is these numbers here. And that each word is numbered. So pink we've assigned to the AA code, green to the BB, and yellow we've assigned CC. Okay, so you can see how you might mark up your transcripts, but that's really research independent. I tend to use colors, but you don't have to. Okay, now we have the information and we're ready to put it into a list. Okay, and we want to set the working directory now to code list and you want to use the CM range temp to create a template and you supply to it just your codes that's all you need to do and then supply to it a file name and this is what it will create inside of code lists we created a text file and it says list and then here you see your codes and terms. Okay. First thing you'll want to do to this is name it something. Perhaps this is time two 
or transcript two. Call it trans two. And that has to be something that can be read in as an object to R, so you really couldn't use spaces or something like that, okay? Or numbers. Something that though can be read into R. And the way we start coding then. Let's actually open that file up. I think that may be easier. Go into SAM data, SAM code list. You can open that file up. You can have them side by side or multiple windows, however you operate. Let's see if we can make that a lot larger. I don't see it. Let's actually then open it with Notepad. Makes it a little easier to, to view. Uh, that's not quite what we wanted to do. We want code lists, code list one. So we meant to open it with notepad. For me, that's a little easier to view. Whatever text editor you choose. And then we can blow that up, make it a little larger for ourselves. Okay, and let's start with the, let's make this a little smaller, the AA code that's in pink. And we see here it occurs from word one to word three. So we put that in as one, colon, three, comma, because we have another something after that. And the colon shows a range or a span. We could have also have done it as one comma three comma, or I'm sorry, one comma two comma three. But just for the sake of time and efficiency, we use one colon three to show it's a span of one to three. Next, the word two, that's word number five, is also AA. And we're gonna stop there because there are no more pink codes. And we can move on to green, which is BB. And we see that from words seven to nine, we have BB. And then again from words 12 to 13. And again, we use the colon to show a range. And then we'll move on to yellow, which is CC code. And from seven to nine again, 14 to 15, comma, and then 16 to 17. And again, you'd want to name that something. Foo, or time one, I guess, time one, and assign it, and save it. Once you've done that for all your codes in your transcript, you're ready to read it in. Look at another option here with here that we could have done. Could also output with the CM range temp. That's the one that created the file that looks like this. You can make it output with various grouping variables as well. Here you'll notice I use the with function because that's a lot of times much easier than supplying data. Um, dollar sign person just use the with function and then put your function inside of that and then we're going to use the dialog variable here you have to supply to it and then you could supply a list of grouping variables I'll put that and you can see what that one looks like right here it also I'll put it as a file over here and you can see that those grouping variables are already filled in and ready to go for us and all we have to do is fill in our codes. All right, in the interest of time, we're gonna use a pre-made code list right here that's already been filled in various codes. And we're gonna just go ahead and dump that right in here. Okay, come back into our studio. So we've coded it, and now it's time to read it in. And to read that in, we need to use the source function and in the name of the txt file. And that's where it's important right here before list to assign it to something. And 
me source it. And if you recall, code list one and two, we assigned it to time one and two. So those actually just got read in. This is what it looks like. It's not really that understandable or pretty or data frame or anything. And that's the second time two that got read in. So now we've read those in as lists and we can use the CM range to long to reshape that into a long format. And you can supply to it um, both transcripts. In that case, you noticed I actually, we have two transcripts in here. You can supply to it two transcripts and it will stack them together neatly. Go ahead and see what that looks like. Has time one, has our various codes here and then start end times and that's in long format. Could have done it just for one transcript if we wanted. Use CM range to long and here we see it automatically defaulted to time one. We just did it for one transcript. We can use as many transcripts as we want here and put them together. As a bonus, let's go ahead and view what that looks like. We turned that into dat L for dat long Go ahead and actually view it with a Gantt plot. So you can see what you're able to make. Here we can see the two transcripts, time one and time two, and the various codes that we coded over time. It's been a tutorial on how to use the um, list transcript format or approach to qualitative coding in the QDAP package.